This is the Three Skeevers Podcast. All right, episode 10 of the Three Skeevers Podcast with Grim from Grim's Forge Gaming and myself, Icy, with Icy Fire Gaming. How are you doing, Grim? Good. How are you? Pretty good. We have another special guest today, Malcolm from the EU. How are you doing, Malcolm? Uh, good day. I'm doing well. Indeed. Uh, I hope the same counts for you. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Grim, I'll let you run with this one. Yeah. Hey, Malcolm, do you have an account over on NA also, or are you just EU solely? Um, I have a couple of low levels on NA from the five minutes that I was inspired to level up an NA character, but after that, I didn't make it any further. <laughs> so basically, I'm purely on PC EU. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think probably one of the best topics for you today is fighting outnumbered. And, uh, yeah. Um, especially when it comes to sort of PvP, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I really like, I go back and I look through all your different videos, and you started this process at least, what, two years ago, um, making content, or what's the story with that? Yeah, I've been, like, playing sort of PvP and some small scale as well since longer, I'd say it's been about three or four to four and a half years. Um, I'd say, like, the first year I was in, in ESO, that is since 2014, I was just either questing or just, you know, taking keeps and shit. And, like, people that, people, whatever people do when they join PvP at first, right? And then gradually I, like, started playing more and more solo. But it was actually rather late. I mean, we're talking about, like, two years in already in, in playing PvP on, you know, high end. It's only after that that I started making the YouTube channel and such. Um, at first, I didn't want to because I was just having a good time playing just PvP, just doing my thing. Um, but after that, like people, like I, I was always having this thought, like should I do it? Should I not do it? And then eventually, like because a, a friend of me really advised me to do this as well, um, I, I gave it a go and I made my first uh, gameplay video. It was right before Christmas, and I went when I went on a holiday as well. Um, I took college on just about time, I released it, and I was like, okay, here goes. And yeah, since then, the only regret I've had about this is not starting it earlier, really. <laughs> nice. That's exciting. I I, I kind of lived somewhat the same scenario, like at least for the first two years or three years, I wasn't really doing PvP and just running around doing the same thing in the PvE realm. And then... Uh, I jumped into PvP and then people said, hey, you should start making content. So, but, um, and it's kind of the same thing. You're, I really enjoy the creativity process. Like you make a video and you're like, ooh, that was really fun. That was creative. And you want to see what other people kind of think of it. You want to share that creativity with people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, also, I've also noticed that, like, certainly back um, before I started monetizing my videos, because I do that too now, but before that, I, one of the most favorite things I would do with the video is choosing music for it. Because, uh, like, at first, most of that did are just gameplay videos, right? I still do that a lot as well. Um, but the difference is that now I have to, like, I, I monetize my videos, so I have to choose music that isn't copyright claimed. And that greatly reduces the amount of music I can choose, which sometimes makes it a bit of a struggle to still find, you know, decent music. Um, but but back, like, I mean, I still kind of enjoy that, except when it, it, it starts really getting a struggle. Because things just keep getting get, getting uh, claimed, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, before that, just choosing a, a good track that really fits the gameplay and all that, and all, maybe multiple tracks that fit together nicely. Um, that is, that's like a part of the creative process there that I really like. I'd say what I still like nowadays uh, when it comes to that is the making of a thumbnail. Like it, 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 I must say it's one of my favorite parts to do, just finding a nice screenshot and all that and, you know, making the layout of that. Yeah, you know, I think with content creators, it's cool to go and look at their progression with the thumbnails, you know, from when they first start making videos to... Um, what's their thumbnails look like then to there's like this turning point where the thumbnails just jump up in pro um, professionalism. Pro yeah, professionalism. And um, so, yeah, I, when we look at your thumbnails, we you can definitely see that maturation process with with it. And it, it's really cool. So you do those yourself? Yeah, like everything you see in my videos, I do myself. Like I edit them myself. I make my own thumbnails and such. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, you took a look at my channel, so you've probably seen how at first my thumbnails were, thumbnails were just really simple, just, you know, the, 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 the name and then just two white lines and then just a black background and that's it. A really like minimalistic approach to it. Mm -hmm. Like back then, I wasn't really too sure what kind of uh, type of thumbnails and such and all that I wanted to get. And I, I kind of liked how it looked as well, because you would just open the channel and it was just really m minimalistic outlook with like this continuous line that goes through the videos, right? And then eventually I updated it, so I added like actual backgrounds to the thumbnails. And then uh, not too long ago, I think it's been a couple of weeks or a month or so, or two months ago, um, I made another upgrade where I changed the, the middle of the thumbnails a little bit as well, just a new layout to it. Um, that didn't spell out the entire name every time. But what, what I do like is keeping that line in the thumbnails. It kind of creates continuity in your videos, especially when people see your channel page. They see the line going through all those, to, to all those videos. I think it gives a nice look to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of brand recognition. Yeah. Yeah, like that, that is yeah, that is very interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you um are any of these skills are these things that you brought over from your career or your out, outside your life outside of ESO? No, this this is actually something that ESO brought into my life. It is the making of those things. Um also when it comes to like music choice and and, and making playlists like I've, I've discovered so much new music trying to find it for for uh yes <laughs> videos so it's it's kind of something entirely new for me since i've been making videos and i quite like that good job you've I done a, have a girlfriend that does uh like graphic design and such and she just helped me like create thumbnails and such like more like rating the thumbnails you know what I could do different and all that so that's something you know, I've heard about this very rare and random thing where the significant other helps with content creating. I think, uh, is there no one else um, actually plays with his, plays ESO with his significant other? And uh, I think that that would be amazing. But <laughs> anyways, we should probably start an episode where content creators say how they made that happen. <laughs> Could be. I mean, I actually met my girlfriend through ESO as well. So I definitely as well. So yeah. <laughs> Wow, what a cool story. Yeah, indeed. Um, we've met like a bit over a year ago now. Um, it was actually through my stream, even that we've met. Um, like basically, um, the way she likes to tell is that, uh, well, she liked the voice very much. She stuck around for that, for, for that. And then, you know, things uh, escalated from there, I suppose. And now we're quite close together and both still playing here. So. Nice. Very That's cool. awesome. Yeah, very cool. So oh. I'm just... Does she yeah. PV? Does she mostly PVP or PVE? Uh, she mostly PVEs. So we're talking like uh, end game raiding as a healer and sometimes DD. And oh, that's actually also something uh, that could be nice. Um, she actually like I have an, an own Discord server, and in that Discord server, um, she has set up a uh, raiding system. So right now, for example, we're doing an uh, Asylum Plus Two progression, um, and that's something that she organizes and she leads it. Um, so it's quite a nice addition because as a solo pvp as you don't exactly do much with your community when it comes to in-game <laughs> events or something and that's something that she has added which is something i, I very much like nice yeah. do, do you do you do pvp and pve or uh, just... uh, yeah i do mainly pvp like i told you my main thing but uh yeah especially since since i've met her i uh, also do quite a bit of pve nice raids and such and also quest uh which is something that me and uh, my girlfriend like to do as well. Awesome. So I just kind of picture you in Cyrodiil doing a clip around your favorite rock and, you know, killing <laughs> 20 people. And uh, she walks up and she says, so I really like the way you made that last guy explode. That was pretty cool. Come here often. And then it, and then it just started there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's true stream, but she literally says that, like, she, she sometimes, you know, she watches my videos and all that. And like one of her comments is like, you that, that that clip right there that was really nice so that that, that kill or something like that that's <laughs> that was fine quite nice. uh that's awesome so eso's uh is working oh okay. definitely yes definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um so i i had sent you a list beforehand of some different topics yeah. and i liked how you had kind of responded. You were like, oh, absolutely. I could talk about this. And so some of the topics were uh, solo PVP and how to do it. And yep. I thought that it'd be interesting and maybe start there and hear what your thoughts are on solo PVP and your approach to it. 
Yeah, um, by all means. So I think like soil PVP is it, it, it like consists out of two parts. The one part is the actual like fighting it too. So we're talking about offensive and defensive rotations. Um, like looking at your enemy, what he does, and responding to that. You know, all those kind of mechanics, those small, those smaller mechanics, I'd say, that really create that dynamic between you and the enemy player or players that you fight. And the second uh, part for me is the environment. Now, this is something that only counts in, in IC and uh, Battlegrounds and in Cyrodiil, of course. In duels, it's only that first part. But in the second part, that, that environment, like I think it's something that is quite often underestimated, and that's a big difference. Uh, like it can make a really big difference. Uh, I mean, you talked about it earlier. You know, my favorite rock and all that. That is exactly that second part. Um, and something I like to say is that when you go around the Cyrodiil, you don't just go around. You have to know where you're going. And if you're in a fight, uh, when you're an outnumbered PvP, so also for solo PvP, you can choose where you fight. You can trigger a couple of people to follow you, and it's all up to you where you fight. So you better make that choice count, which is exactly why I always take those people to a rock that I like or something. Something that I, of course, know as the back of my hand, so I know what to use, but also that provides a lot of LOS, or sometimes that makes people fall off the rock and take fall damage, that spreads them out, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you were to flip the other side of it is this if you're one of those random people that are you know on your way to a resource or you're mm -hmm. tailing behind a zerg and you happen to see some random sorcerer off to the side and they think oh i'm gonna get this guy and then one guy trickles off the stream and then three or four guys come over to get you four or five and they just think that you're running for your life and you're actually fishing right now you're yeah, you know definitely. kind of showing them the bait and leading them to a trap you know and yeah, i think that's, that's awesome yeah that, i mean it all falls into that that thing that that people often say you know those random people that start chasing people that like those people sometimes say like don't chase the sock and that's exactly why the sock isn't panic or something even if he does get like bursted to low health or something, like when the when, when the player is good, be the Sork or another uh, like class for solo play, they will still know where they're going. So as soon as they survive that initial hit of the people hitting them, they got this plan like, look, I'm gonna go to this rock and you guys are gonna go follow me because you're mad, <laughs> which is nice. And then, you know, I'm gonna spread you out over there and I'm gonna just, you know, kill you one by one or sometimes multiple at a time. Yeah. Um. Another another topic we had talked about um, or mentioned was how to fight outnumbered, and this is you kind of setting that tone where you pull people off and then fight outnumbered, mm -hmm. use your favorite surroundings and rocks. It sounds like and from some of your videos that I'd seen too, um, an old stomping ground for you was Imperial City Sewers. I see you picking off groups at mid and, you know, oh, where yeah. more ball spawns and stuff, and I was really excited to see that. Um, but could you explain what it's like there picking off groups as opposed to mm -hmm. Cyrodiil? Yeah, I absolutely love the, the Imperial City Subas for this kind of stuff. I mean, the districts are all right too, but the Subas especially, um, I'd say one of the main differences is how much uh, LOS you have and how much easier it is to get away, like nowhere you have open ground. The only risky part, I'd say, is if when you go to the middle of the sewers, which is where most of the Zerg will be located, and there there's a big open ground. So there you got to watch out. But as soon as people start chasing you and you get into one of those corridors, you are really safe to go. And it's completely up to you how fast you go, how close the enemy is up to you. You can really play around with that. And I'd say like that's one of the big differences. So just the amount of other west you can get and how quickly you can get away. And I'd say a second difference is the amount of mobs in there. Um, which is something I quite like as well, especially when it comes to those um, like uh, sewer bosses, like the wandering, the patrolling bosses. I, yeah. I, I love to use those. Like when, when, when I get into a fight and that boss is there, like that's one of my favorite things to happen. Because what it's going to do, it's just going to put really high damaging AoEs all over the place. And <laughs> you, as, as the solo player who is often much more experienced than the people you fight in the sewers, know how to deal with it. You know don't stand in stupid you know that <laughs> it's gonna happen too because you're experienced with those bosses but those other people they aren't they are there are many people so often you know they kind of stumble over each other trying to get out of those aoe's and it hits them quite a lot 
Um, so that's something about, about, about SUSE that I love as well. You're speaking our language right now because <laughs> there's a lot of times where we're fighting out number down there and we will recruit one of the banners to uh. <laughs> assist us in the fight because that's exact same reason. And some of our, our most exciting memorable moments we're fighting extreme outnumbered and recruiting a banner and then we're kind of at this part where if you go another tunnel section just right over another through a hallway there's that's where another banner patrols and we'll actually pull two double banners to an area oh, with two of them down there. yeah and just have absolute chaos going on and um it's pretty funny you know to see those type of scenarios but indeed indeed uh... Like I've never had two banners. That that must be something I'm gonna try, man. <laughs> two of those banners. <laughs> yeah, but, they're, um, they're on your team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What I have experienced before is that, like, one of those banners. It's a pretty fun fight. I've even uploaded it to YouTube as well. It's where I got one of those one VXs in the sewers, and like one of those uh, banner bosses gets pulled as well, and he literally only attacked the enemy group I was fighting. Like he didn't even aggro <laughs> on me. <laughs> that was that was beautiful, just. But yeah. Yeah. Nice. I, I think, uh, Grim, the, the part, the fight that you're referencing is the one where we were on DC. It was like a 2v6 or 2v8 with also two banners. And I think it was the Fire and Necro banner. And so we're just juggling the banners, you know, running around. And then these DC, they would die and then res, come back and then just die again, trying to kill us. But we're just <laughs> dodging and weaving all of the banner AoEs while these guys are trying to get us but then they're not watching their footing so then they just get hit by all the aoe they die and they come back again i think it was about a 15 20 minute fight and the yeah. even crazier part i got a call from work so i had to take the call while also juggling all this stuff too so it was a really chaotic moment but it was a lot of fun you should have had veronica take that call i should have had veronica take that call. Oh, exactly <laughs> alexa please answer the phone <laughs> <laughs> oh lord everyone's gonna hate us now uh, so yeah that you're speaking our language so does that mean when mid-year mayhem is going on the sewers and mm -hmm. districts imperial city becomes uh, your hunting grounds for that time frame yeah one yeah 100 percent like it's it's my favorite thing to do is just either run into the districts um which also often has like it also has those bosses you can play around with um but i think i think like the one problem with the districts sometimes is that people can rest so quickly um and come back but sometimes i still manage to have good fights there and yeah just just going from district to sewer to district again and just you know pick, picking up people left and right it's one of my favorite most favorite things to do right in fact yeah i i'm i get excited every time i hear and uh, i see event is coming over again because you know i, I know uh, my time has come <laughs> yeah i, I kind of wish those ic events were a little bit more frequent and maybe not lasting as long so if they my idea would be if they made the ic events once a month for a, just for a weekend but they were every month oh, right. so then you could kind of build up to it and plan hey we're going to do this ic event when it comes around it's just from friday friday morning at 10 a.m to Monday morning at 10 a.m. and then that's it. And then that you know, sounds we'll, like we'll... a really nice idea to be honest. I like yeah, it. that that way you get more people going to the sewers a little bit more frequently. Yeah, indeed. I like that idea. That would work out really nicely. Yeah. Like for myself, yeah. obviously, yeah. but no. also to bring back some life in IC because that's been a bit of an issue that IC has been having for such a long time since it's been released that outside of the event is practically dead. I mean, sometimes there's some PvP in there, but it's always like the same ten people that you fight. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very small community. Um, what about classes that are best suited for um, solo PvP and outnumbered? With your level of experience uh, doing this, what have you found to be easier um, as far as classes go? Um, like, uh, no matter what other class that I try, I've always been the most efficient with Sork. At it. And that's not me saying that Sork is like the best class for it. But I am saying that this is just really like my my you know my, my thing, the sorcerer to play with it on that. So if I would have to make a choice between class, I would always play sorcerer for that. Um but I've also played a bunch of other classes and I'd say most of them work for that. For for you know doing some level of one VX. But I don't really agree with the idea that you know everybody can one VX because uh, let's say you're you're a magic and necromancer main. Like you're gonna have a horrible time doing it. I've, I've, I've tried that class as well, 
and yeah, it's 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 got something like sometimes it has good defense and all that, but you don't even have CC and all that. But without going in it too specifically, um, it, it it's not a good time on Magic Connect commands. So, like if you find some really horrible enemies, you know, then you can do it. But you know, the the one the actual one vx fight is also only one part of solo PvP because. Much of sort of PvP is just you know you go outside for the keep you wander around you go to a place where uh, like the two enemy factions are fighting each other or something else is happening you take a resource I don't know you know it's a whole process of just yeah you know pl playing sort of PvP just wandering about and then like ten minutes or something of that is going to be an actual one v x fight let's say a one v four or one v five or higher and it's only that part that you see on YouTube. But the other part, the, the, all these other parts are also important to take note of. And yeah, some classes like Magic and Necromancer are really not going to do that well at all because they, they also have zero mobility. If you, you know, you have no grace against time, maybe, but that's about it. Yeah, I, we uh, we know that to be true too, that speed is king in PvP. It allows you to get out of bad positions, to reposition yourself for more advantageous mm -hmm. opportunities, things like that. So, yeah. To um, a certain extent, I'd say, because when you look at uh, the meta these days, you know, Stamina Necromancer, Stamina Warden, those, are, those aren't exactly the fast classes, yet they are also really good for, for 1VX. I've been playing Stamina Warden myself as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that class just survives on dealing a, like, you know, with, with its constant amount of high healing. And then doing a turn around and doing a big smack on the enemy group or with a defensive ultimate. But mobility, like next to just a major expedition and maybe a snare removal, is not much there, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd say that mobility is indeed important because it makes up for the shortcomings of your class. So, for example, Magic of Sorcerer, to take that as an example again, defensively it's not too great. When you compare it to, say, a Stamina Warden or a Stamina Necromancer, Sorcerer can tank things out as well. Same counts with Stamina Nightblade. Um, but what makes those classes so good is that the mobility that they have to cover up for that, which like that mobility is kind of going to make them tanky in itself. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about, um, proc sets currently? Um, have you felt with, uh, sheer venom and, um, venomous smite and mm -hmm. these different, you know, um, Unleash terror or unleash terror, like all these different proc sets, are they hitting your sorcerer hard, or do you feel like it's just another thing you have to deal with, or what's your thoughts on that? I personally, I feel like it's just another thing you have to deal with, and I, I know like uh, it's it's not a good thing, right? That there's so many proc sets and people are going to just do poison injection and uh, proc three dots on you that just take you all the way down. You know, it can be a real pain to deal with, but. It's just another pain for me. It hasn't been something that extreme. For example, we've had a, a patch. Um, it was, I think, in the start of uh, scale, scale Breaker patch where you had the uh, enchant meta. I don't know if uh, you guys know about that, but um, like in the first few weeks of the Scale, scale Power patch or Scale, scale Breaker patch, um, enchants which proc from weapon dots, no matter the bar you're on. Um, so, for example, you could cast a Blood Grace into somebody and they would just keep on procking a chance when you swap to the other bar um, with infused uh, things as well. And that was also a horrendous um, like meta to deal with because back then, too, you had this huge amount of procs, um, like procs, dot procs uh, hitting your enemy on, on, on the enemy. And like that was also a pain to deal with. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, when I look at that, for example, and what's happening right now, these are just two problems that you face in 1VX, and I, I definitely don't think it's become impossible to 1VX, for example, especially not if you use the proc yourself. I mean, one of the things that carries the outnumbered PvP here, also for solo, is the Crimson set, which is also a result of that proc meta. So, you know, you, you get a bit of a drawback from enemies using the procs, but you can also use them to your advantage. You know? Yeah. Um, I noticed a lot more people using Crimson right now as well. You could see the large AoE explosion getting ready to go off and the heal that'll come in from that. Um, yeah, it's pretty annoying. I know me and Papa, we ran into... We, it was a 2v3 and we killed the other two guys and then the werewolf that was left, he was running the Crimson set and we were also fighting a Necro Banner in the mix of all that, 
And the werewolf, we would get him to about 10%. And then, of course, his crimson goes off and he's yeah. back to full again. And oh, Lord, <laughs> so frustrating. Werewolf with crimson, that's something else. That is. Uh... <laughs> like, to me, I think it's silly because you're a werewolf. Do you need, uh, like, another crutch or something to make you more of a power or whatever? <laughs> yeah, but... with werewolf as well. And I agree, it's strong. I've also liked using, um, like, the Shield of Sensual set. Which is just going to give you more magic assistance, so you can spam that heal. Like yeah. that heal in itself <laughs> is already crazy. You know, if you can spam more of that, I'll take it by all means. Especially because, like, even when you're in Adel West, this thing is going to heal you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Oh, one more thing. So yeah. for that weapon ability, proccing on like the back bar and stuff, I think mm -hmm. that that's still a thing, though, right? No, um, no, no. Like, um. Okay, to give two examples, uh, for example, you cast uh, Reach, the dot you know, from the Desert Staff, the Reach dot, mm -hmm. and you have a back bar, uh, let's say Fire Staff, with a Shock Enchant, right? And you cast that Reach dot on the enemy, and then you swap to a Form Bar. That Shock Glyph on your back bar is not going to proc anymore. But there was a patch where it did still proc, with the Infused Glyphs and everything. And it, it sounds maybe like not, a, like not a big change, but it, it, it was a horrendous amount of pressure to deal with. Oh, right okay. Now, this, this only happens with uh, AOE dots anymore. So, for example, if you cast Elemental Wall on the ground and then you switch, switch, switch to your form bar, um, then that Elemental Wall is still going to proc your enchant from the back bar. Oh, That's okay. AOE dots. Single target dots don't do that anymore. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because I know, Grim, what was that ability on the dual wield bar? Is it the evasive cloak or something that will still proc your oh, yeah. enchant yeah, and quick. stuff? Yeah, yeah, Quick Cloak was still proccing my enchants for my... Yeah, that one still does it. Because that's also, yeah. you know, AoE, I guess, uh, is the reason for it. But, yeah. Oh, okay, I got you now. Okay. It's like if you have that, but then with things like uh, Blood Craze and such. Yeah. Um, so with the proc sets and things like that, um, have you found yourself kind of exploring, implementing some of those to your builds? Or, mm -hmm. or you're kind of a purist? What's your thoughts on that? I, yeah, I'm, I'm really not a purist when it comes to, you know, you, you have to be better than them and not use the proc sets. Because to me, it's rather clear that Zendamax wants us to use proc sets. Like, they've made that change in the last match where they were just like, okay, we're going to do a 180 right now, and we're going to implement proc sets all over and make those the best in slot choice. And they've, they've continued with that dispatch. So for me, it's rather clear. Zendamax wants you to get proc sets, wants you to use proc sets, wants to make that the most effective tactic available. And I think that it's not something that then, you know, the, how should I call it, elite PvPers or something should shy away from. Um, I think we should use it to our advantage because, you know, you can complain about it all you want. Zenimax kind of does what they want regardless because nobody ever said Proxets adding like that was a good idea. Nobody will probably ever say that except some, you know, random people here and there. But I don't think anybody who knows what they're saying, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> And I think also as a solo PvP, you can use everything you can get. Like, you don't want to handicap yourself further, uh, in my opinion. So yes, I definitely have been using those proc sets. For, for example, my Stampler, I used Crimson and, and Sivaras. Uh, so two excellent proc sets to use. You know, Crimson being the carry that it is for another PvP, and Sivaras adding the pressure on top. Like, I'm really not going to shy away from using that um, if Xenomax clearly incentivizes people to use it. Yeah. Do you do you think they should make PVE gear separate from PVP gear, or you think no. when they make these sets, it's just kind of use it wherever you think it'll be best? And that's kind of I, it. I, yeah. I don't think it would be a good idea to split uh, PVE from PVP further because I don't think the PVP com community is big enough for that. Because if, when when you do that, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not that experienced in in that kind of like game organization um like changing to such a system from one to another system but i think like if you make it harder if you make the gap wider for pve players and quests and whatnot to get into pvp you're not going to have that influx of new players anymore and on a community that's kind of already dwindling you know people keep leaving leaving the game every now and then um i really don't think you want to start messing with like the source of new players and, and drive those two communities further apart. Oh, uh, you know, that's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. So, because I guess we can, I know people have been saying that Proxets, they, clo they close the gap between 
PvP players and I guess inexperienced players. But if mm-hmm. we want to get more people to, to from PVE to PvP, they can put these proc sets and then I guess you can say compete with everybody who's there and then feel like they do well and then be more encouraged to keep doing PvP because they have these proc sets to help them out. So I think I that yeah. kind of makes sense. Yeah, that that might make that might be a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not even because of that specifically that I'm saying this. It's just because increasing the gap between the two is going to lead to a decrease, like a decreased amount of people that come into PvP just because it's like, you know, when when you go to the extreme and make it like kind of a different game, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, kind of along those same notes, as content creators start using proc sets. I was looking at some of the comments on your videos from people and I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you do. (laughs) I'm just going to tell you that right now. I appreciate the work that you do and the entertainment value and the educational value that you bring to ESO, but there'll be people posting and I get these same people that post on this and they're like, congratulations, you killed a bunch of PVEers. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let you know that I know, <laughs> and I think other people should know that what you did is still impressive. And yeah, you, you also get that feeling when you read that comment, like, oh my God, here we go again. Another yeah. Person. Yeah. Woke people are just like, oh my God, you're just fighting PVE as how is this possible? Like, yeah, because yeah. like, that's always 1VX though. You're fighting people that are less experienced than you. And yeah. if you're fighting PVEs, which may be a valid thing, you're also fighting a huge amount of them. And then you still, it still becomes quite a challenge. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I, it, cause I think another part is even say like, yeah, you're picking them off, whatever, but then as soon as they all turn on you, now you got that, that's where your individual yeah. skill comes in. Like how do you recover yeah. from that? And then, you know, continue the job. Yeah. That's especially about the position I was talking before, like comes in play too. Yeah. See, I, I, I like your videos and for me, I'll put videos out there occasionally that have me killing PVEers as well. I recognize them as that because they're just light attacking my, in my yeah. general direction. They're not lining up burst. They're not using line of sight. They're, you know, they're fairly squishy and, um, but there's some entertainment to it as well. And like when we use this video that you just put out yesterday, I thought it was great. Three minutes, 20 kills. Oh yeah. That one. Mm-hmm three minutes, 20 kills. And I love that video. Um, That's a perfect example of what fighting outnumbered is like from time to time in Imperial City, you know, and, Mm -hmm. but the negative comments on there. And uh, anyways, I just want to say, I appreciate you and the entertainment and the education that you bring to the community. And uh, don't, don't let any of those people, you know, prevent you from putting out content like that so they themselves probably can't do what you just did you know and they're going to put a negative comment on there so yeah thanks for that thanks for that yeah um i start seeing negative comments as content creators start using proc sets now too like we're being changed (laughs) <laughs> to be honest, like on, on that build I was talking about earlier with Stamplor, I haven't got many uh, negative comments at all. There's sometimes people that dislike that, and and but even like when you look at the like dislike ratio, we got like I think it's you know a hundred and something uh, likes and three dislikes. So I don't even see that feedback that people don't like to use proc sets. I think people are really starting to get the message that Zenimax is giving that. Look, you're going in a proc meta, whether you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just always picture that I get that negative comment, and I always picture, I don't know if you're a Game of Thrones fan, but the lady that walks around ringing the bell, shame, you know. Oh, yeah, that one. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, you know, that's that person trying to... Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Maybe it's because PCEU doesn't have many of these these people, because I imagine it differs from platform to platform as well how the community looks at things like that. And I feel like in PCEU, there's really not such a thing anymore as, um, yeah, this thing is way too overpowered, don't use it, or be better than them and don't use this set or this ability or whatnot. People just don't care anymore. (laughs) I I, I think that's a good thing. It's in the game, might as well make use of it. And if they're going to uh, implement proc sets with the intent of shortening the skill gap between you know 
um, lower action per minute players and higher action per minute players. You know, they're trying to arm them, but what they're actually doing in in their hands, that proc set might give them a sliver of a hope, but in your hands, that proc set is almost guaranteed your victory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that is something that people underestimate, I think, when they complain about the effect of proc sets on one indexing as such, is the realization that you can also use these things to your own advantage. Again, the example of Crimson and, and um, yeah, sets like that, or all pressure sets and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so for you, during this process, was there ever a moment where you felt like you leveled up, like you just took yeah. a step back and said man that was amazing yeah yeah I, I had a story of that actually it's um it's from way back in the day i mean we're talking like i think it's end of 2014 or 2015 something along that but you know how like the zergs always go um say from a keep say from uh brk to arius you know there's like a, a zerg going to arius and then they get defeated at arius and then a zerg from the other faction chases them back to BRK and like this like an endless cycle that goes back and forth like that. It happens, well at least back in the day it happened quite often. Um, and as I was saying before, like back in the day I was also, you know, like first year or so of playing the game, I was also just entering PvP like, hey, let's take some keeps, you know? And I would join my faction in taking that other keep. And then I would get killed and the other faction would push back again and so forth. And like a moment I felt like I leveled up, it was it was just like, what if I like don't die at that other keep, you know, <laughs> and I do something to survive. And I, I was also playing Magic Sorcerer, so that means I go and, and, and I, I kite somewhere, right? And at, at first I wasn't even with the attention, intention of doing 1vx or something, it was just with the intention of, you know, let's survive until my own faction comes back again. And that was really like... A starting point for me like a moment where it really started you know going that process of trying to survive on my own um i'd say that kind of kick-started it yeah so you step back after that and you're just like wow <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> yeah no legit like I, I would survive i'd actually survive and then see my own faction like come back and i was like yeah, I'm still here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> holding, holding the ground. Did yeah. you happen to record this, or was this before you started content creating? It, it was before I started uh, creating content, because back in the day, I also had a potato computer, and I, I like if I would touch a recording program, the computer would not uh, would not appreciate it. Uh, but in that moment, that's where Malcolm was born, right? <laughs> it, it kind of is, yeah. That's kind of the moment where, where I started learning to survive on my own. Uh. Nice. Yeah, I, I like those moments where you, you're kind of doing something for so long, but then all of a sudden just something just clicks and then you act yeah. on it. And then now it kind of just jumpstarts this whole new world that you're living in now. It's always exactly. pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Um, a side note, too, something I kind of noticed. Um, I have a couple friends. I use your videos for anyone that is looking for advice, tips, or tricks as far as so being a better sorcerer. I use your videos for that, and then I link them that. But something that I really like is how athletic of a sorcerer you are. You use dodge roll regularly, <laughs> and you're not afraid to fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with people, too. <clears throat> a lot of people think that as a sorcerer, I got to protect my range. I got to stay way far away, and, and I got to you know pelt them from far. And you'll do that, but when they're on you too, I notice that you won't create space until they're off CC immunity and it's time to streak and you're using that space to um, CC them, line up burst and kill them. And you always put value in survival over getting a kill uh, above yeah. anything else. Let's keep the fight going on. And that means I got to stay alive. And you, your use of dodge roll, setting people off balance and things like that is very impressive and just fighting toe to toe with stamina classes. Um, would you say that that's pretty unique of a play style for you? Or do you see other people? Is this like an EU thing or what's your thoughts on that? I, I, I don't see source was doing it much at all. Um, like uh, that, not, not on YouTube or anything for sure. Um, but what I, what I do see happen happening is night blades. They often utilize that an exact strategy. Like roll dodge is even more important for them there. 
But Nightblades do, they create distance and then they go into the target for a little bit and then they create distance again, etc. And on your remark from earlier, it's also not a good idea to create distance simply for the distance. You gotta go and, and, and have that when it matters. So for example, you know, let's let's say we got be fighting a stamina warden or something, and that stamina warden is going to put um, a dizzying swing and then not a dizzying swing with the sub assault hitting, and that second dizzying swing is gonna CC you. And at that time, it's a good uh, idea to be at distance because then they can't hit you, they can't make use of that of bounds. But after that of bounds has expired, why why would you still need the distance? They're not going to CC you un unless if you like stand into their Arctic Blast for more than three seconds, which is something you can play around with as well. Um, so I basically, I, I, I use my distance when it matters. And when it doesn't matter, you know, I, I'm not going to forcefully try and make that distance because I can just, I know I can survive in their face. Um, and surviving in their face is also nice because then I can streak through them should they pressure me again. And that's going to take such an amount of pressure off of me because I'm close to them and then I'm suddenly very far away and I've seen them as well. So that's just an example of, of, of how the distance plays, uh, play happens for me. Roll dodge as well is, is not an uh, important part of it. Um, that's both for the, the kiting part, you know, when we're talking about 1vx, we get like a group of enemies jumping on me. If I can do like a roll dodge and then shortly after another one, and then another one, it's going to negate so much damage, it's going to allow me to kite so much, and generally it's just a really fun playstyle for me. Yeah. I had noticed I was watching one of your videos, I don't even remember what video, but I just took this so to heart, and it ended up, because I, I train PvPers and uh stuff like that as well like uh, i use your videos for anyone that's a sorcerer but for sorcerers one of their banes is dealing with night blades and i was watching a video where you got jumped from a night blade from behind and when you broke the cc from the night blade you dodge rolled backwards through mm -hmm. through them setting them off balanced you hit them with a haunting curse and then streaked through them mm -hmm. stunning them and then you turned around and did like just a real simple bing bang boom and dead <laughs> yeah. and yeah, i was that's... like brilliant <laughs> brilliant <laughs> uh thank you uh, yeah it's 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 one of those little tricks that i like to use to backwards roll dodge um it counts when a night blade jumps on you but also when there's multiple people jumping on you that roll dodge backwards, like, nobody sees it coming, for starters, because they expect you to roll dodge away from them, not through them. And secondly, then you're behind the target and you can easily, like, use a defensive stun being streaked on them. Or, or offensive, if you cast a uh, haunting curse beforehand. Yeah, you do a great job always trying to get to their flank or trying to get to their back, and it's just causing all kinds of havoc for them. So... Yeah. And yeah, on a side note, like the off balance is something I have used in the past when it comes to those roll dodge builds, but I've actually dropped it as of uh, like recent patches because streak has just become such an excellent CC. I don't want to use the off balance CC anymore. I don't want to do that medium charge heavy attack anymore because that can be dodged, that can be blocked, but streak just goes through no matter what. Yeah, yeah. For now, hopefully they never do anything with that, and it you know breaks the block Definitely. and everything else. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm most scared of in ESO. It's it's people, uh, people Xenomax going at streak. That that is like if if, if I ever see streak um, popping up in the in the patch notes, I hold my heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to find a spot on the bar for like Rune Cage or something like that. That oh man. So, question for you. So if they. Because I feel like streak is very important for a PvP sorcerer, and mm -hmm. I'm not even sure. Could could you play a sorcerer without streak and still be as effective? Not as effective, definitely not as effective, because you take away your ability to kite, and you take also take away a lot of your defense in the meantime. You take away a great CC or a great escape tool, the ball of lightning, because ball of lightning is also really good, by the way. Um, so I really don't think you can do it as effective anymore. It's a, like a pivotal skill for magic assaults, you know. Same like when, when you talk about, let's say, um, you know, light blades and you take away shade. Or you take away cloak. It's like in, in its entirely as a skill. Um, it's one of those skills that the class, that really defines a class in my opinion. Um, I'm not saying it's completely impossible to do one of the acts anymore with it, but you're definitely not going to be as effective anymore. Yeah, because yeah, I was kind of thinking if... 
say you combine race against time so you get that snare immunity and removal and then also with the shield stacking capability mm -hmm. maybe it would also yeah. kind of give you an advantage or you know kind of put you on par with maybe not nightblades because they have stealth but at least maybe templars or wardens or dks or necros or something yeah, I mean, to be honest, I can imagine you'll be a little bit close to, like, on par with Magic and Arblade, because Magic and Arblade is not too good right now. Um, totally agree on you know, one right now. <laughs> 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 totally agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I've just resorted to simply bombing with mine, and that's about it. Yeah, it, that's a sad thing. Um, last night, I'm literally on that class, and I'm like, it is so hard to put people away. I don't have access to a Spectral Bow yet you know, to line up burst. So I'm I'm relying on what to try and kill people. A heavy attack, swallow soul, you know, flame clinch and maybe hopefully hit them with an alt, you know. Mm -hmm. And that but that kit doesn't feel as strong. And I'm like, well, I almost have to use Calorians when I get yeah. to CP for that additional burst. Like this this class's damage is not lining up the way I would like. Yeah, so. a big issue of that is that everything is easily avoidable. Um, like also your CC is not good. Um, I mean, when when you talk about like when people use um, concealed weapon, and then it's a decent CC. But if you're relying on fear, for example, the range is just non-existent on that. And often yeah. it's not going to cast. You can't. You can barely even use it offensively because you have to really stand in the middle of a, like the enemy's character in order to still hit him. And yeah. Like, it's 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 more difficult to play with uh, for sure like that when compared to streak. Yeah, I'm gonna figure something out. That's what we do. We figure something out, but it has not been easy. <laughs> <laughs> True. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's, there's people always gonna figure it out. Also, when it comes to Magic and Arblade, I've always seen people that figure out. Uh, like myself, when I play Magic and Arblade for like one VX specifically, I'm just like, man, I wish I were on Sork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'd be able to deal with it so much better if I were on Sork, and that kind of took the fun away from me to play that class. And that's a really important thing. I don't even necessarily play a class in order to play with it or in order to make it effective. I play with it to have fun. That is still a thing I do. Um, and Magic and Airblade hasn't been that for me. On the other hand, Bombblade, that has been a lot of fun for me, so I'll, by all means I go with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... So, how has performance been over on EU? Uh, pretty bad. I, okay. I'm sure that's like a general thing for when it comes to ESO. Like performance has, has always been one of the limiting factors to it. And on PC, EU is definitely no different, so it's maybe even worse. Um, I'd say with the AOE tests, like in, in this week, where they've combined all those AOE tests with the group and uh, um, cooldowns and everything, I'd say the lag is better. Uh, I, I have actually noticed some improvement. Previously, I have not, and outside of the air retests, I definitely also still see all that lag. And yeah, it, it's such a pity for the game, really. I mean, I'm sure like many people before have said it as well, but the potential of this game, if it didn't have its performance issues, being it in PvP with lag or in PvE with bugs and sometimes also lag, is so huge. Um, but because of that, these issues that Zenimax has with their serves, I think I'm missing out on so much. Um, yeah, that being said, my, my approach to it, like, I've, I've seen the performance in this game developed for, for, like, you know, almost since they got launched. And, yeah, it's, it's never really been good. Um, I'd say back in the day, sometimes it's been better than it is now. Sometimes it's been worse, um, to the point where you can spam Dawnbreakers, and then suddenly your entire screen goes white. Like, <laughs> you just save it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm not sure. I think it was in 2014 or 2015, uh, somewhere around that. Um, but yeah, but the lag would just get to the point where you could spam Dawnbreakers, and not like not the actual skill, you spam the animation. Same yeah. goes for Meteor, people could do that. But with Dawnbreakers specifically, like, all, all of a sudden, all those animations would finally reach the server, and you, your screen would just go entirely white. <laughs> like I, I'll show you a video of that after after the podcast. Yeah, it's, it's, please it's do. <laughs> Working as intended, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always joke about Dawnbreakers. Uh, Papa, Icy, and I will be down fighting outnumbered, and we have to hit our ultimate like five times. Work, 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 yeah. work, work. And then it randomly goes off. 
but no damage. <laughs> and I forgot who I was telling. I said, I just, whenever that happens and I hit my dawn breaker and it goes off, but there's no damage. I just imagine somebody, some random person in the EU servers just out of the blue gets blasted with a dawn breaker, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, that's clearly what's happening there because the damage wasn't here on NA server. So it's maybe it's, it's, it had to go somewhere. So where is it? They damaged their servers even further, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's been uh, not able to bar swap and potions not working and abilities not working. And then recently, like desyncing, if you use a programmable mouse, um, just random buttons will desync. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So, say if you're using the three button as your primary spammable, or or maybe it's not even your primary spammable, you're using the three button as whatever. And randomly, your three button will stop working on your mouse, and you're like, "What the heck?" And and then you check the three button on the keyboard, and, and the three button on the keyboard actually does the ability now, okay. and not on the mouse. But then when you leave ESO and you go to whatever other games you like to play, works just fine there. Like How it's does it even work. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I have no clue, but um i've had a handful of people that that's become a thing they're like my execute isn't working and then i'll say hit wh whatever corresponding button hit that on your keyboard see if it works and they're like what the heck and i'm like yeah i have no clue go try that on a different game as soon as we're done here and see if it works there as sure as it works there so but I, i've had like when you talk about the things like that um, not really the exact same thing, but sometimes I get like a desync with the skills lining up. So yeah. I don't know how exactly it happens, but like you're pressing a skill while the other two skill is still firing, and then <laughs> after you've released the button for that second skill, it's still going to fire it. And then you know, you get an entire like delay chain of skills that happens. And that's something that mostly happens in lag though. Um, so I haven't experienced it that much because I mean, I've, I've said it in the, in the DMs already as well. I don't play in lag, like on, on normal like VX at this. I do play Bombay sometimes in lag, but when it comes to something that really depends on having good performance, I, I don't do it. Like I find that one of the, the main rules to when, when it comes to ESO PvP, just remember it, don't play in lag. I got this thing when I, I, I stream or something and I die like two times, sometimes three, to things like delays at a time where I know it's nearing prime time, I'm like, all right, it's lagging, I'm out of here. I'm going to do Battlegrounds, I'm going to stop the stream and do something else. Because playing a lag is just frustrating. There's literally nothing else to it for me. Yeah. And if I'm frustrated playing a game, I don't have fun with it, I'm not going to do it. That's like, a, in my opinion, a golden rule that you always have to keep in mind for it. Also when it comes to lag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really hope that there is, um, I guess, a light at the end of the tunnel with the Microsoft purchasing, you know, um, cool. ZOS and everything. And so hopefully something comes to that. Maybe the server upgrade that everyone's been begging for, maybe that happens. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to be hopeful as well, but I'm, I'm, I'm too cynical. I'm not believing it. I don't think anything's going to happen at all. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's pretty like direct and all that, but I really don't think anything's going to happen. Um, I yeah, hope yeah. I hope you're wrong. Please, <laughs> please know, be I wrong. So I hope so too. I hope of myself to die. I'm wrong because like I have kind of I've lost Zenimax. Like I've lost faith in Zenimax as a company that I should have hope for, and. It, it sounds depressing to do that because I'm still enjoying playing the game. You know, I still like logging on, playing Magic Castle also when VX, but I've stopped looking at Xenomax for things. And the exact moment I stopped doing that was, it was when they added uh, the one second cost times on shields. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, in Murkwire, I yep. think, uh, one, one of the first like PTS patches or, or maybe even two PTS patches, they were like, all right, let's just put the one second cooldown on all shields because no sorks. And everybody was just like, what the hell are you doing? You're like, I'm in freaking light armor here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm in light armor. And that's my only, you know. It, it, yeah, it was at that point where I, I just lost faith in them. Like, I, I, like, at that point, I was just, okay, you know, I'm going to enjoy a game, but I'm not going to, like, ask you for something. And if the game doesn't work, I'm just going to log off and take, like, the chilled out. Is it the casual approach, maybe? 
add it like that. Because when, when you start doing random things like that, and you see server performance being what it is for so many years, you stop hoping for better, really. <laughs> I, I have a friend that follows you pretty closely. Dan uh, Danuxum is his name, and uh, he's on the NA um, server. He's a, he mains a sorcerer, super dangerous, and he just really uh, a big fan of yours. But uh, Dan said something a while back, and he's like, I'm not going to reward bad behavior and so i canceled my eso plus membership mm -hmm. if they want to give me a free-to-play product then it's going i'm going to treat it as a free-to-play product now if they were to actually fix the game if they were to actually fix the problems of functionality and performance i have no problem picking up eso plus i have no problem dumping money into the crown store and putting money mm -hmm. into the company but when those funds don't feel like they're being allocated properly. I'm not going to reward that behavior. And he told me this a while back. And I've kind of actually taken on that mindset too. And I canceled my ESO plus membership. Um, and it's difficult. Um, this is something I've noticed. They do such a great job flooding you with every time I log in on a character that has um, points into uh, crafting I've got items waiting in my mail, crafting items, you know, and yep. every time I pick up something, now I cannot put it in my ESO uh, crafting bag. That crafting bag is super valuable, but I'm not going to make that be the deciding factor on rewarding bad behavior. So, yeah, no, that, that's a sensible thing to do. I think it's like, you know, it, it, it's my bull really to give up a bit of like, quality of life, a bit of comfort to send this message to the company like, hey, you're not doing a good job, you're going to lose money on yeah. this. But I think the problem with that is that the people doing that is just, are just way too small of a fraction. Because ESO, like it or not, is still consistent mainly out of role players. And when it comes to PvP too, people just log on to go take a keep or something. Like I did way back in the day, like I'm sure many of us did way back in the day. And those people also notice performance, I suppose, at, at, at some level. Um, role players won't, though. Those that turn around in questing zones and all that. And people that take keeps, they may have something to be annoyed at it, but not to the point where they're like, oh my god, this is hopeless, I have to send this company a message. And the few, like, high-end players that have this, like, honorable incentive, in my opinion, to send that message, there's just not enough of them to really send it through to Zenimax, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. sad. It really hurts my heart because I, I played this game since beta and I really, really love this game. And I make content for this game the same way you do. And I, for me, I was a little torn. I was like, I'm like making content for a game that I don't support their business model or I don't support their actions or inaction, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I'm making content. And you know, it's like this balance. I'm also making the content for me because I enjoy making content. And um, this game has in place, you know, all of the build diversity, being able to put different gear sets and builds together. And I don't know other games that have this outnumbered, you know, fighting outnumbered type situation that I'm looking for that ESO has. But so it, it's this really hard uh, position to be in you know you're always looking forward to what game's coming out around the corner maybe it will be better you know maybe they fix this game and it's um i've been doing the same thing as you though um i'll log in with icy and papa and my friends and we'll go look for outnumbered fights and the second we get killed not being able to bar swap or ultimates not going off we're just like okay screw this and we log out and go play something else and that hurts my heart <laughs> <laughs> i mean for me it doesn't to be honest because I, I like just like you also like i still love this game as well everything you can do with it and you know i i go in before prime time i have like two or three hours or whatever of pvp and then it starts lagging and yeah i also just log, log off and it's a pity you're quite, you're quite right it's a pity but i'm not gonna say like it, i find it sad or something because I know I've had a good time and I will have a good time after. And, you know, I'm, I'm just having my, my leisure time and I'm, I'm having good fun doing it. I'm not really going to stand still thinking like, damn, this, this, this could be better, you know, when I actually have better alternatives to go at in the meantime. Yeah. 
has the missus known or has she uh, mentioned performance issues or things like that if yeah. she hangs out on the pve side yes yes definitely like trials they uh they can be quite messy as well sometimes um just you know there's this this, this pretty famous uh, bug where sometimes you pull like a mob or something and it just starts turning in place without actually walking anywhere uh, mm. which happens when things are lagging out sometimes but it, it's definitely there as well it's a bit different than in, in pvp in the sense that for me when i join a trial because i'm not really main in pve it's just funny you know because you see like mobs doing random stuff and just going all over the place and i'm just i'm just laughing at it um, like a, a trial like Asylum Sanctorium can also be really infamous for that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, when it comes to literal like lag, like we have in PvP, I haven't noticed it then that, 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 that much there, like actual skill delays and such. It does happen, but not to the same extent. Um, I feel like there it's more like the, the mobs and the mechanics that have issues rather than the players. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's so interesting to me that even I, for me, I feel like PVE should be almost near perfect. And then when you go to PVP, because now you're incorporating all these different people like coming into like this certain space and then all crazy stuff can happen. It, it's just so funny that in PVE, you're getting all this lag and, you know, things not working or just mm -hmm. mobs doing crazy stuff that they're normally not supposed to be doing. So, mm -hmm. oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking trials here. When it comes to dungeons, for example, dungeons, I'd say, are in a, in a good position. I'm not saying you never have issues there, but overall, like, performance-wise, they are good. Um, but as soon as you take a step, a step higher, I don't know whether it has to do something with the mechanics or the increased amount of players, so being trials, yeah, you start getting issues there as well. And I'd say that's still a long road for them to go as well, fixing performance in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you said that you just recently, or not too long ago, you started monetizing your videos. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's been, I think, over a year or something now. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Nice. Um, that's got to feel good, like a, an accomplishment there. You know, now all of a sudden, this hobby that you enjoy doing and creating this content, you now have um, a little bit of funds coming in from that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So. Have you started a merchandise line or anything like that? Or do you have a Patreon or what other ways yeah. for the listeners? Can they, like, they want to help Malcolm out. How can they help you out? Um, it, well, what you say that Patreon is indeed a thing. Uh, at first, I was only monetizing for YouTube for quite some time. Um, and I also started a Twitch channel and sometimes I stream. Um, but I've kind of stepped off of that. Uh, because I simply think Twitch takes too much money <laughs> from your subs. It sounds like a really greedy thing to say, but it's just, I think there's more efficient ways for me to get value out of what I do and for people to support me and for people to get something back. Because what I've done instead of, of like putting effort into Twitch, I've put effort into Patreon. And it's through Patreon that people can ideally support me, but I can also give them a lot back for it. Like, I've, I've made tires where people can view my builds before I release them, have additional help, um, send gameplay to me, and either view it, have one-on-one -on -one lessons. So, you know, where we just get into a Discord call and we duel or we do VX or whatever. Um, and I help them out that way. So it's kind of like a, you know, a selling point that I can add to it, which is something that Twitch doesn't have, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm going to take you up on that. I, I created an EU uh, account so that way I could level some people over there. And uh, I'm going to have to join you one of these days and run around and, you know, I'll get killed, but I'll draw fire for a little bit and line them up for you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That is very prevalent when Magic Us also goes into TVX. Like when you have, for example, um, standard decay to say something randomly. Um, I've seen so many times that the standard decay takes a huge amount of pressure. Like me and that standard decay um, pull a zerk, and the standard decay dies. And then a couple of those people from that zerk, they keep on chasing me, and the rest like just spawns back to their keep. And then I, I kill those few people that chase me. I'm like, hey, good fight, good fight. And I go back to there's the standard decay, and the standard decay is just sitting there like, bro, that was not good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, by all means, by the way, I'll that to the next thing. By all means, it's uh, I'm totally up for that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so they can get a hold of you at Patreon. Um, what I'll do is I'll get a link to your Patreon. I'll make sure that that is in the descriptions of the video too, so people can find that. And uh, I'll steer people to that. And then if we can get a link to your Discord, if that's where you, you conduct um, 1v1, you know, one-on-one -on -one training and things like that, I definitely want people to have access to your Discord. And um, was there anything else outside of Discord and Patreon, like different ways? Um, yeah, but for starters, thanks for all that. So, like, that's, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and... Uh, I, yeah. Uh, what, what else is there? Twitch. There's Twitch. I can I can link to that as well. Um, it's not really a main thing for me. It's just you know I stream sometimes when I feel like having fun with it and put notification in. That's about it. Yeah, you might find yourself doing uh, just YouTube live moving forward, huh? YouTube live. That's actually not a bad idea. I guess I yeah. haven't even thought of it. Yeah, and then you could just clip, you know, one really small, like five or ten second. I mean, it only took you three minutes to kill 20 people, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could just get, you know, a little three-minute clip of you killing an army of people, and that be the intro for the video, and it'll become a hot thing. <laughs> that's a pretty good idea. That's, that's neat. Thanks. <laughs> so, did you have anything for him, Icy? Um... I think I'm all good on my end. Any any closing remarks before we close out? I'm um, just super happy I mean, that you came here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I want to say it was good fun. Um, hope for you as well. And yeah, that's about it. Awesome. And I think with that, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. See ya. Bye. You're going to say bye-bye, Argonians. Bye-bye, Argonians.